What is going on, guys? Thanks for tuning in to the next episode of the Three Peaks Fitness Podcast. I'm Coach Mark. I'm Coach Lynette. And today we've got a really special guest following up with our last special guest. <laughs> <laughs> immediately after. Yeah, immediately after. Yes. Uh, we have Dr. Matthew Silver of Alpha Project Physio and Performance. Um, thank you for joining us. Yeah, no Dr. Problem. Matt. Appreciate you guys having both of us, uh, both of us on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. in case you're wondering, they are married to each other. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. two physical therapists married to each other. <laughs> yeah, cool, man. So, why don't you give us the the rundown? You know who you are. What's your story? Yeah, let everyone all the, know all the good stuff. Yeah. So, uh, my name is Matt. Um, so, physical therapist. Like I said, classically trained, but I'd really prefer the term uh, physiotherapist. So, oh. like we. Like I say that a lot and people are like, what does that actually mean? So like like myself, you know, my wife Veronica, we're both PTs. We have our doctorate in physical therapy. But really that big distinction is um, really taking a next level for your education. And like for me, it's focusing on CrossFitters, runners, mm -hmm. like mobility and treating more active people versus like a general physical therapist. They really treat everything. I don't know if that, that makes sense. So, uh, yes, okay. physical therapist, but I prefer the term physiotherapist. Okay. Um, in Europe, they're all physios. But, like, I, I think it's – there. I think there should be some distinction between physical therapist versus a physio. Yeah. Is, is that general in, in um, North America to distinct to distinguish between the two? Like, physios mm -hmm. is for active people and physical therapy is for general population? It's, uh, it's not like you get a certificate or anything. So, it's okay. more like – I think it's growing in popularity. Okay. Um, a lot of PTs, like – a lot of practices are like, oh, sports performance. And I'm like, well, everybody can't be sports performance. <laughs> so, like, I think this is a way, okay. probably, I, th I think it's a great way to say, hey, like, we're all physical therapists, but we have this little specialty. We like this, mm -hmm. we like the word physio a little bit more. Cool. Yeah, right on, right on. So, and you said that you work with a lot of athletes, like CrossFitters, runners, yes. stuff of that nature. Um, more than all the people that want to do fun things, and they also get injured a lot <laughs> because they want to <laughs> do those fun things. So, it's yeah. a lot of runners, a lot of CrossFitters, a lot of, like, boutique kind of gyms, kind of like what you guys do where it's, yeah. it's uh, I know you guys are, because we, we took a class, me and Veronica, yeah. did, I think it was like a month ago. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was not feeling good. That, I had like a headache. I was not feeling good that day. But <laughs> uh, it was like you guys did a thruster workout. So yeah. it's very much of like barbell athletes, power lifters, like really yeah. what you guys do is really right up our alley of like, cool. and I know Mark, you were telling me you guys get a lot of runners. So this will, I think this will, people will find this pretty interesting. But it really, it's active people. Um, and we did a, when was it? It was, we did a workshop at, it was like a 55 and older living center. Yeah. Like most people are retired, but like all, all they want to do now is play pickleball. So <laughs> they had a pickleball, uh, yeah. uh, core. I don't even know what you call it, but it, they set that up, uh, in the living center and like, you know, they, 55 and older, they're retired. They have a lot of money. So they're, and, and time too. So all they want to do is play pickleball. And uh, we did the workshop, and like a lot of people were just getting injured from playing pickleball. Yes, so there seen... are pickleball injuries now. Jeez, there are physical therapists that are starting to specialize in pickleball. Injuries. <laughs> yeah, pickle... Maybe it's our next niche. I don't know. We should be <laughs> we should be doing that. I got to start playing pickleball. Like I played in high school, and it was fun. But uh, so we do. Really, we see people that just don't want to be limited by their aches and pains. Okay, I love that. Yeah, very cool, very cool. So, and, um, you know, kind of in that same vein, what are some of the more common injuries that you see with the runners, your running yeah. clients? That's it, that's a great question. So it's I'll, probably a lot, a lot of knees for the mm. most part. Just a lot just, of knees. They take the, the brunt of force if someone has something mm -hmm. off, like running form-wise, or they're tight. So it's definitely a lot of knees. Um, it's actually a lot of back stuff, too. You'd mm. be surprised of, like, how many runners – just they have a hip drop or they're mm. they're I had uh, I'm treating a professional CrossFit athlete right now and he he's actually a long time runner turned CrossFit athlete but when he runs he really has a lot of like his leg overextends mm. so when you run you actually don't want you want a little bit of hip extension you don't want a lot and okay if you don't know what hip extension is it's just bring your leg behind you oh when you so, swing it back yeah, okay when you're, when you're essentially pushing Okay. So you Push can it. you All can right. actually overextend, and then your <sighs> pelvis ends up kind of like anteriorly rotating, oh, okay. and a lot of runners get back pain from that, or yeah. their hip drops, or their hips are tight. So it's actually a lot of yes, a lot of knee pain, but we end up seeing a lot of like low back pain with a lot of runners. Interesting. So that's pretty common, but I think it's knee pain from like runners' knee, IT band, yeah, probably back, and then a lot of you'd be surprised how many upper extremity, like my neck hurts. When yeah, I run, because they run, yeah, <laughs> they're all right. they're like super tight up there. So it is, it's a lot of things, but I think the most part is probably knees, backs. I mean, there's a lot of like ankle plantar fascia stuff as well. So uh -huh. I say that's probably the big three. 
Yeah, All right. very cool. Now, is there any like uh, recommendations in terms of like general recommendations on like running form, right? So, mm. you know, if I'm a runner and yeah, I got my, you know, my knees, I got those aches and pains <laughs> yeah. from running, maybe my lower back, like what are some good cues that you would give your runners to make sure that their, their form is where it needs to be to prevent those injuries? Like the quick stuff? Yeah. Like the quick. So yeah. one of, let me see here, we can get into the weeds here, but probably one of my favorites is just saying, um, because a lot of people don't, they don't, I mean, I, I was just the same way when I was in high school. I just like, I'm just going to run and beat myself up and hit the mileage hard yeah. when, and I just got all these aches and pains from it. Like, ah, my knee was flared up, my back hurt. I was doing all the wrong things when probably one of my favorite cues to do and just say, hey, let me just see what happens is I want you to imagine you are running on ice. Oh. Like it's very, like there's no friction at all. There's no oh. coefficient of friction with the ground. If you overstride and you land way out front, like you're going to slip, right? Yeah. Oh. If you overextend and you try and push too much, you're also going to slip. So, it, well, how do you move if you can't push? Well, it forces you to, to, oh. to let gravity move you. So you have to lean forwards. Oh, mm, okay. That's a good one. So that's, yeah. so when you run on ice, it, it takes, you, you don't have any, you have any friction to move. Right. You don't have any friction to push or to like oh, land okay. way out front. So you have. It forces people when they think about it. They're like, "Oh, I get it now." It, it forces them to move that way. That's a good one. Yeah. So that's where, like, we I use cues a lot. It's same thing when when you're, you're cueing someone to deadlift or squat. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, push the middle of the ground, push your hips backwards. Don't just yeah. use your back. So it's it's very much like the fine line between like training and, and PT stuff. Like we, the best trainers I know or the best physios I know were trainers at one point, mm -hmm. like CrossFit coaches or like what you guys do. So. Yeah very much of the cues are still very very useful mm -hmm. even in this physiotherapy setting that's one of my favorites is cool. run run, run on, on ice. ice yeah that's a good yeah. one yeah run i'm gonna think ice. about that, <laughs> I'm running. I like that. <laughs> it's getting cold out it's gonna be super cold during christmas isn't it it's gonna drop to like oh, seven, yeah. 17 14 degrees but like, first it's gonna be 58 degrees and then yes. it's gonna drop <laughs> it's gonna be oh i was hoping we're going back up to new york for christmas but if we were here i was hopeful that like oh it's gonna snow a little bit maybe there would be a white christmas in maryland there we go yeah. and then i can really run on ice you could try i don't know if snow would be that sometimes people are like well i don't i can't picture that and i'm like okay we'll try mud i don't know try yeah. snow slippery something slippery yeah slippery yeah, yeah. something slip like butter i don't whatever you want to whatever you want to imagine you're on it's a gotta slip be and slide that would be a slip and slide <laughs> Down, that'd be rough going downhill. <laughs> you can't. You're not going to be able to stop yourself doing that. <laughs> That's funny. Right on, right on. Cool. So, in your opinion, uh, you know, obviously, what I've noticed as a personal trainer is a lot of times um, people will actually pick up running maybe a little bit later in life mm -hmm. when it's like, you know it might be one of those things where it's like oh I really can't like the gym beats me up because I'm not you know maybe I'm not doing lifts properly or whatever the case may be so sure. or or just running is just more accessible it's easy I just put on my shoes and just go for a run right. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that there's like an age limit to running and what type of considerations or are there any additional considerations that need to be made for runners as we age? I, I don't think there's an age limit. I think there's, um, so I'm actually writing a book right now on like running stuff. Cool. And there's a, I was like, well, let me just, I want to look at who, like the Boston Marathon, what's the age range there? Like, yeah. how, how many 20 year olds, how many 50 year olds and a I think the most was like 30 to 40. Like it's actually a lot. Most runners are actually middle aged. Mm -hmm. They're like that, like okay. in, between your 30s and 40s. And then there's a very steep drop off around like 50, 55. So a lot, a lot of people in their 40, 30s and 40s and early 50s are running, and then they end up really dropping off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's an age limit. I think a lot of people, like you said, kind of get into running later in life, and a lot of that could be like, you know, they played football in high yeah. school or they play like a team sport uh, yeah. a, a team sport and then yeah. you know it's I am just sure there's pick up basketball and some are you can find them easier than others but a lot of times it's like well I can't play football anymore what do I do mm -hmm. okay I'm going to run yeah. but there's a steep drop off between like 50 and 55 and then it gets even it gets more exponential as you go down like there's maybe I don't know 1% of the runners were over the age of 70 for the boss like it was a very very small amount of, of runners so it's mm -hmm. as we get older in the 30s, 40s, 50s, a lot of people are running and then there's a steep drop off. So why the drop off? It's, I mean, some people just want to, I'm just going to run a marathon and like, oh, just do it. They just want to like do it. When Boston's mm -hmm. actually probably not the best example because you have to like be good <laughs> yeah. to qualify for Boston. But I'm sure it is goal dependent. Like some people want to do it and like, hey, I just want to run. Okay. See what I can do it's for a couple It's just a bucket years. list thing. Yeah. It's a bucket list thing. But okay. I think 
I mean, if you're going to do Boston, you're pretty committed. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, I think it's much more of these runners are getting older and then uh, knee pain hurts. I just got to stop. I had a knee replacement. Ah, It's not worth it anymore. So I think that is that might be contributing to the steep drop off. And I Mm -hmm. only did Boston. I could have done like New York and Chicago and maybe um, what's the other top ones. Like Berlin's one, um, mm-hmm. but like I could have looked at the other ones, but I only looked at one. But there seems to be a steep drop off from like fifty to fifty five, and then as as runners get older, I think that matches up with what I see at races. You know, just you know, anecdotal. Yeah, it's all like the thirty forty year olds. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. are killing it. I think. Well, and what I hear from my friends who you know, I invite them to do things that are like, oh yeah, I used to run, but you know, mm-hmm. my knees won't let me do it anymore. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And yeah, a lot of that is like, well. You might ask them, well, what have you done for your knees? Like, oh, I just didn't want to. Yeah. I did PT and then it didn't work. I'm like, well, who did you see? And you dig deeper. It's like, oh, they, well, what'd you guys do? Oh, they gave me these like leg kicks and I did some squats. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah. that probably didn't, that's probably why you didn't solve your knee pain. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So it flows into, um, the statistic keeps changing. I see it from 20% all the way to like 90% of like runners that get injured in a year. Yeah. And all these, so like the, all these studies, they're like they all define what injury is differently. So okay. for the most part, it's probably around like fifty percent of runners get injured in a year. Okay, mm-hmm. I won't go higher than that because I don't even know what it is, but it's probably around fifty percent. So like, okay, if you have a massive marathon, like the whole Boston Marathon, I don't know how many runners there are, but half of them probably got injured in that year, mm-hmm. which is an insane. It was the same that's, number. Yeah. That's a big number. Which is insane. Which is probably why we see that steep drop off. Yeah. yeah, between fifty-five they get and sixty, tired of it. they're like, ah, screw this. I'm just gonna. I'm going to go do, I mean, in their opinion, they're like, well, let me just go like work out and do stuff like what you guys have or CrossFit or whatever it yeah. is, because like running yeah. doesn't make you stronger. It just, it's great for your heart. I mean, it's great for, great for your lungs. It's great for your arteries to like yeah. make them healthier, but it's not very good for like actual strength training. Mm-hmm. So it has its purpose, but people yeah. tend to have problems because if that's all they do. They're missing the key component of the strength part. I know, yeah. you, I know yeah. you guys harp on that a lot from when I was here. Yeah. So that's that. I think that's part of it. I don't know, kind of going off on a tangent, but like no, the running is, it's very cardio based. It, yeah. it doesn't make you stronger. And if you're going to be a serious runner, you have to have some supplemental strength mm-hmm. to like, like a lot of CrossFit athletes I know, they'll end up like, they'll, they'll run on like their off day because they're like, well, I'm all beat up. I just want to do something easy. And yeah. like, cool, that's perfect. Because like you've been yeah. doing, you know, some Olympic lifting and thrusters and stuff. In the meantime, yeah, yeah, go easy, go run. <laughs> they use it as like their easy day. Yeah, yeah. it's a recovery activity. Yes. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, I think it's almost like a like a double edged sword, right? Because it is so accessible, and the, the barrier yeah. to entry to running is so low. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Oh well, look, I, I'll just go run. I've yeah. run before. I can go yep. run, and that, but then once you start stacking up the mileage, you really need to take into consideration your form. Am mm-hmm. I doing yes. supplementary strength training? Uh, you know, on the side to make sure that I'm not injuring myself when I'm running. Yep. You know, if you're not taking all of these things into consideration, if you get really, really serious about running, then that's when you end up dropping off at 55. Yeah, it's and, uh, and I had like like my story, kind of how I got into PT and even started the business was in. Oh, nice! I think I started running in middle school. Everything was fine until like maybe my junior year of high school, and then I just started having knee pain, uh-huh. and then it was hip pain, and that's where I started really ramping up mileage, and I was just like beating myself into the ground with all, mostly all I was doing was running and then no mobility work, no strength work and mm-hmm. just kick, just kicking my, just running myself into the ground. And I did it. I ran a little bit in college, but I'm like, I'm just all beat up. Like this is, yeah. <laughs> this is not, I left about it now, but I'm like, man, this is just not fun anymore. Yeah. Um, so I took like, I think I took a good, I stopped running 2015. When did I come back to, I only came back to it like 20, <sighs> maybe 2018, 2019. Okay. So I took a good oh, like wow. three or four years off. And it was a lot of, um, for, I first had to do a lot of mobility work and then strength training. And now I, I, I mean, I can run no problem now, but it was like, I couldn't run for like more than two miles. And I'm like, mm. damn, my knees are screaming at me. Uh-huh. So it was, it was a rough journey back, but that's yeah. why I take it so seriously. Cause I know, yeah. I know what it can do if you don't, if you don't take these steps, mm-hmm. like it can be a very rough, uh, rough uh, path after after being injured when running. So were there some specific exercises that you did to make it so your knees no longer bother you when you run and your hip? That's a loaded question. Oh, <laughs> it was okay. a lot. Okay. It was, I mean, running form was a big one. Okay. Um, I just didn't, I didn't know how to run. Okay. And then a lot of it, it was almost like it was a lot of running form, a lot of mobility work. And then once I was moving better, I was like, okay, now we can actually like strength train. 
So it was, it was very because my ankles are super stiff. My yeah. hips are really tight. It's very hard to like, I'm sure you guys know, like it's hard to get deep into a squat or have access to your yeah. glutes when your hips are just all locked up on you. So yeah. it was a lot of having to, I had to like, let's move better first. And, and then I was like, okay, now we can strength train. Now we can, now we can do a lot of accessory work and actually like, oh, my quads aren't super, super stiff. I can actually like, you know, do just, I can actually just get stronger and do like a heavy kettlebell squat or a heavy kettlebell deadlift and feel my hamstrings and not my low back. So it was, it was very challenging coming back from that because I think part of it too was you guys talked about sitting with, with Veronica, right? Yeah. From like just the the middle school, high school, college, and every time we're driving, we're sitting. Uh, I think that probably had a play in it too from how tight my hips got, but uh, I had to do a lot of hip mobility work. That was that was wow. ex- Talk about all the things I did. It was a lot of hip mobility work. Wow. That helped loosen up and like, oh, my knees don't hurt once I mm. fix my hips. Mm-hmm. That was very nice. That yeah. helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah, especially because running, I mean, you're just sagittal, sagittal. You're just yeah. moving yeah. forward, moving forward, moving it forward, is. and you're not. <laughs> boom. Yeah, and so, of course, you're going to get some some imbalance if all you're doing is moving forward and you're not doing anything to offset that. Yep. So um, are you seeing anybody, uh, any pandemic runners, like anyone that picked up running mm. during the pandemic and did a bunch of things wrong, <laughs> and now they're That's in a good question. to see you? <laughs> I, I think there's definitely a running boom during COVID because people were like, hey, I can't go to the gym. I'm not safe in the gym. So I'm yeah. going to go run outside and get fresh air and not COVID, not COVID air. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, cause I started the business in 20 end of 2020. So, Oh wow. Yeah. It was end of 2020. So it was still like, <laughs> like COVID had already happened. Um, so it was, it was like right in the middle of COVID. So I had seen some patients in the insurance practice that I was at that like they, I saw some runners that way. Yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't notice anything crazy. Um, I think I just noticed just in general people were getting – I didn't notice it during COVID. I noticed it like more around – a little before like now-ish, like end of 2021 mm. or early 2022. I think people had – they've been running. Like you, you, if you start running, you right. could be overstriding. You could be tight. And you can get away with it for a while. Like yeah. you'll be, hey, I'll be fine. But then once I start ramping up. So yeah. I think it's more of – I was seeing it later, more now, end of 2021, early 2022, because people were like, oh, I like running. I was introduced to it during COVID. Now I'm going to ramp it up even more. Mm-hmm. So I think they were getting away with it during COVID. And then they're like, oh, I really like this. Yeah. And then boom. But and I, and even now, like when people started coming back to the gym, yeah. they were like, bam, I'm going right back at it. And then I saw that too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you... um. I was looking at your Instagram, and you had a really interesting video that I wanted to ask you about. Mm. It was all about, um, you said, it, I think the title was Why Do Runner, Runners Get Injured? And it had to do with what we call allostatic load. Mm. And so and you were talking about all the different stressors in your life that kind of mm. accumulate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get hurt running, and you think it's the running, but it's all these other things yeah, in your could life. could be your sleep. Like, yeah. your sleep, like, not so good last night? Mm. Or I think it's generally it's like it's – over time, like you could have one night where you're like, all right, I got five hours of sleep. That was not so good or four hours, but then you could make, you know, you can make it up, maybe get 10 hours the next night. But if you're like four or five, four, and you don't eat well, and you're not hydrating, you could, everything else could be really good. You could be strength training and mobility work and, but that's going to be the stressor. So it's, it's mm-hmm. like, I, I like what you said too. It's not just, you know, strength, running form, mobility, even though those are key components yeah. to it, but like, what's your sleep like? Yeah. Are you eating the right foods? Are you hydrating? Like, wh- like what does everything else look like? Uh, do you have a good relationship with your spouse? Like, do you have a family life? Like, that could be totally just horrible. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, doing all these other great things, you're still that's that could affect things too because yeah. that's a whole mental state. So it's a very it's very much why does my knee hurt? Well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it I'm, is. You know, we, we do these workshops too. Like all like we love doing these, but we, you know, we'll have like a knee pain. Well, we generally do like a squat workshop, like squat yeah. you know form or a mobility workshop. And mobility is just a piece of that puzzle and people feel fantastic, but there's always somebody who's like, oh, this didn't really help me. And I'm like, well, mobility might not be your problem, Mm -hmm. right? You might be weaker here, muscle imbalance, insert possible problem. That's what could be going on. Like, I just don't have time to to find (laughs) everything going on with them, right? So it's it's a spectrum of, it's that, I think I drew like a little pie graph or something. It's like a whole circle of how do all these things falling? And it's, I think it's a good guy. I'm sure there's more I missed on there. It wasn't all inclusive, but it was right. a good amount where I'm like, here's all the things that could be going on. How do you rank yourself in all these? Yeah. 
that yeah, that's something that we we talk about occasionally. Is you know, what's your allostatic load? Because that's going to contribute to you know injuries in the gym or yeah. Yeah. how much you're able, uh, how, what your results are like yeah. from the gym. Yeah, it's so, so important for sure, for sure. Okay, cool. Kind of switching gears, man. We're big fans of the minimalist shoe. Okay, here yep. we wear them yep. all. Lena, I wear them all the time. A couple of our clients wear them. <laughs> what do you guys have? Oh, right. Today I'm wearing Zeros. You got Zeros? Yeah, I'm wearing Whiten's, the okay. Amazon brand. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's an Amazon brand Zero shoe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Zero drop, yeah. Um, yeah, I should have it. I'm the one with the big CrossFit shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're like more lifting shoes. They, I think they have like a four millimeter, hmm. excuse me, lift. Um, it's like, what do I feel about barefoot yeah. shoes and like, stuff? What is, what is a, barefoot a PT's running, opinion? you know, what's your take yeah. on it? I, I'm a massive fan of it. I think it's, I think it's what most people should strive for. Like, I... I mean, I'm not saying go around walking around barefoot to the store because I'd, I'd rather you not step on glass and like right. into your foot. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, our, our foot was made to uh, in a certain way for us to move. And if you start putting up, putting putting it in like a shoe that has a massive stack height, all that cushion, hey, we're going to control what your heel does. We're going to control for pronation and supination. Well, maybe your foot should be doing that anyway. Like, why why do we need? It's almost like um, oh, we're going to put your knee in a brace so it doesn't cave in. Well, shouldn't I have the muscle strength to like drive my knees out when I squat, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's very – I would see it as the same argument where maybe if you're new to running and like your your foot has no idea mm-hmm. what it's doing. It's almost like if I were – if I wore like a, a rubber like this but for my hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like my hand was stuck like this all day, yeah. most of the day. Like good luck opening up a doorknob. Like right. <laughs> you, would, you would not have nearly as the uh. – the proprioception and knowing what what you can do with your hands and fingers versus like like your foot like you're you want to push your big toe into the ground and feel the ground and grip it and that's how you you actually create an arch in your foot so wow. whether someone's flat foot high arch doesn't really matter it's art it's are you using your arch mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. i don't know if that makes sense because like yeah. the bony the bony structure could be like my foot's a little bit flatter but i can still stand and really dig my toes into the ground and, and shorten my foot and create an arch mm. and I feel it working. So I, a lot of people were like, well, we're against barefoot because I, well, I have a flat foot. I don't pronate. What do I do? I'm like, well, it's not that you can never barefoot run, but maybe right now you should be wearing, you know, uh, I don't know, a shoe that has more support like a Brooks or right. something like that. In the meantime, you, you should be doing some work for your arches and actually activating them. Cause I guarantee this person has been wearing shoes for, most of their life and just they just don't know how to use it which is normal because again they had imagine if your hand had a shoe on it you you have no idea what you're actually doing with your hands yeah um like that analogy yeah so i'm I'm a big fan of it um whatever it's minimal shoe or barefoot yeah but i remember when i was in school i I forgot what the project was we had to do like a it's not kind of like a thesis sort of thing but it was very much like to graduate, you had this big project at the end of the year. And we did ours on, like, I think it was running form and minimal shoe, uh, big, like big cushiony shoe or barefoot. Oh, and, like, okay. okay. Would it actually affect your running form? Okay. And for some people it did, but other people it didn't. Interesting. For, for those, so, like, if you, if you just went, okay, I'm going to wear this shoe, I'm going to run a little bit, and I'm going to change to barefoot, I'm going to run. And... So some people they did change the running form for the better, or they they marked they measured things like did you land full of the foot and yeah. then, or heel strike. So there was some good changes, but a lot of people didn't change, and those are the people that crashed and burned. Oh, so like if you didn't if you don't know how to run, like if right. you just say I'm just gonna go run, and you like heel strike and you overstride and you do that barefoot, you're gonna have a lot of problems. Ooh, the you're not shoe gonna do gives that very long. You're not gonna do it very long. <laughs> so like the shoe gives you a little bit of like wiggle room to say hey you're, and that's why I, I actually prefer runners. If you're totally new, if you if you're not a distance yeah. runner at all, like I, go get the cushiony shoe. I'm, yeah, I'm cool with that because it gives you a little bit of cushion. Yeah, that force is still going to go right through your body. Like I'm sure you guys have seen that when the heel yeah. strikes the ground, there's a massive spike. Like yeah. that's still going to happen. Yeah, but at least it's going to give you a little bit of give, and you're not going to like blow up because from doing <laughs> you know five or ten miles. So yeah, uh, you ha- you almost you have to earn the right to go barefoot or wear yes. minimal shoes mm-hmm. yeah. to run in them. It's like training wheels on your bike. Like you don't just like go out. Yeah. At three yeah. years old, I don't know when kids when they're four or three years old, but like <laughs> you don't just say, "Hey, yeah. have fun, good luck." Because you start out fall. with training wheels. Yeah, you start yeah. with training wheels. You yeah. learn it. Like, okay, now I can do this. Let's take them off. Yeah. So that's that's the way I see it. And then that's 
again, you take that shoe off your hand, you've had it on there for, I don't know, 10 years, like you're going to be like, what am I doing with my hand? Right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no it's so weak. On. I can't do, yeah. yeah can't, don't drink coffee. I don't know how to yeah. write. <laughs> yeah, good luck writing anything with the two, like it just wouldn't happen. So, yeah, yeah. I, that's so true. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's something that we always talk about is, you know, when we, you know, are, are telling our clients about minimalist shoes and stuff like that, you got mm-hmm. like, start like really, really slow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. think about how, like, where you want to start, start slower than that, <laughs> and then start slower than that. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. start really, it's a very, really slow. It's work like your 10 way. minutes a day. Yeah, like work your way. It should, it should be that. very gradual. Yeah. And basically, the part of that is like you, your foot has to be, think of like the best way I like to see this is think of like all that stack height in your shoe. Like I'm lifting shoes, I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about like the cushion in the shoe. Yeah. Think of that as like replacing arch activation. Mm. Like, if you can't activate your arch, maybe you should be in a hoka because, like, you're just like, like uh, so many people are like, my plantar fasciitis was cured from wearing a hoka. I'm like, yeah, that's great, but like, it actually did solve the problem. Mm. And I'm like, if you go run barefoot or you go run with another shoe on, it's, it's probably going to come back eventually. So that stack height to me is like, it's taking the place of your uh. foot actually doing its job. Mm. So that's why, like, it's it's very. They should be doing some kind of like activate your foot if you're going to be working because like the worst thing you could do is like somebody just has the flattest foot in the world and say hey go wear this minimal shoe mm-hmm. well you're just still going to be the flattest foot in the world it's right i think yeah. because i remember um my buddy had the five finger shoes mm-hmm. it was back in high school that's um, very advanced yes. <laughs> i'm not ready he for had, those <laughs> i made fun of him a little bit for it but like he had the five finger shoes and uh, he was fine with them but like i put them on and i, I think i ran 10 miles with them once and i was like Oof. i'm blown up like I did the. I was just, the, you know, I was just a fifteen-year-old yeah. kid. I'm like, I'm dumb. I'm just gonna do this, and it just like blew up in my face. I'm like, nope, not ready for this. You were not ready. So it's very much of you have to earn the right. And yeah. How do you do that? You have to work on your foot muscles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it's actually very challenging to do that because like people have they've never trained their foot before. They've always like I'm just gonna put it in shoes and and I'll be fine. Yeah. So it's very much it's like our, our hands were used to like using all these intrinsic muscles. Yeah. We're not with our feet because again we have this mm. massive shoe that just does all the work for us. Yeah, we started in July wearing the shoes, just mm-hmm. walking around, yeah. and we're just now getting into running with them on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like jogging. For yes. like it's been six months, and we're yeah. just barely dipping yeah. our toe into the running. It's very, <laughs> and, and I've had all sorts of aches, pains, injuries from going too soon and some more even like an ultra like i'm a big fan of ultra they have they're making a shoe now it looks like a hoka and i'm like come on guys they, like, they sold out but yeah. the typical like the escalante it's like this much stack height zero mm-hmm. drop i'm like it's a great shoe but even going from like a brooks like a traditional brooks to yeah. that like that was too much for me at mm. one point i'm like i gotta scale it back and just walk in the ultras yeah and i can you can actually i can feel when i was like just like ignoring my foot or when i'm like Oh, I'm actually like contracting my arch and doing this the right way. So mm. it's very, uh, so th- th- it's almost like the ultra to give me just a little bit of support. It's yeah. even that I wasn't even, I wasn't ready. I wasn't able to even do that yet. So it's very, uh-huh. uh, or running that, excuse me. So it's, uh, even I've had some problems too. Doing it. Yeah. It, it takes time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. I was just, um, so I, you've been running for a little while in them cause you're getting ready for the, uh. Was that five miles in yeah. next year? My goal is to run five miles yeah. in minimal shoes on February 18th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, I've signed up for a race. Okay. Yeah. But it's a trail run. It's, it's oh, it's a, nice. Yeah. So it's not, fun. it's not, you know, cement. <laughs> Up in trails are, it's intense. I have yeah. a lot of respect for ultra runners that just do like, because I went, um, I went for a trail run in like the Frederick watershed. I think they hold the Catoctin 50K, I think they, it's, it's mm. somewhere around that area, but yeah. it's like, Man, you're going uphill super steep. I'm like, I'm just gonna walk this. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not running this like 70 degree angle uphill with yeah, turns we'll see and what roots. Happens. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm just gonna walk this. So it's, it's a lot of respect for ultra runners. I may end up doing a little walking, but I'm gonna. Uh, my goal is to be able to do it in minimal shoes. Nice. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, um, let's shift gears here a little bit. Um, I'm curious. Like, and you know, I'm sure the listeners are kind of curious. Give us like a little bit of insight into your business. Like how do you, how do you start yeah. alpha physio? Like what, you know, what kind of motivated you, sure. you know, give us the rundown. It is a, uh, uh, you want the long story? <laughs> <Why not? laughs> so I think for me it was, um, like I, I mentioned before, like my background is definitely yeah. distance running. Mm-hmm. Um, got injured in high school, injured in college and just like two years into my college career. I'm like, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm, it's not worth it. I had so much knee pain, so much low back pain. I'm like, yeah. you know, well, I'm, I just, it's not worth it. I'm done. 
I mean, at that point, I, I was like, I have so much pain, it's not fun anymore. Mm. So I'm like, and that's what might happen with the, as we talked about before, about people yeah. getting older. Yeah. That might happen. And it's then not I was fun like, anymore. Yeah. yeah it's just, in my case, I was 20 years old wow. when that happened. So I'm oh. like, well, I'm like, I just, I just don't want to do this. So I focused on PT. Um, so graduated, uh, met Veronica, and then we decided to, we did a travel job first right before COVID. So it was like a three month placement. Um, it was in a nursing home and I realized not for me, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, we, PTs are meant to be there. And that's kind of why I love distinguishing between PT and physio is mm-hmm. like, you know, we can work in many different settings, cardio, nursing homes, hospitals, but like the physio is more of that like sports yeah. performance sort of yeah. side of things. Yeah. Um, so I did that. It was like, not for me. And then we found jobs here. In, that was in Alabama. Uh-huh. So we found jobs here in Maryland. I was actually in like Lowndes County, mm. like uh, near Leesburg kind of area working. So I'd commute from Frederick to there. Yeah. But realized it was in an insurance uh, mm-hmm. private practice. Mm-hmm. So basically all that means is, you know, they have these contracts and there's co-pays and stuff. But I, was, I ended up seeing like maybe two people an hour, sometimes three. Mm. And I just, there's a CrossFit gym next door. There's a couple other gyms in the area. And I'm like, man, there's certain clientele I really enjoyed working with. Yeah. And other clientele, I'm like, I'm just not the biggest fan yeah. of this. It's a lot of people that were not just all Medicare and all that stuff, but it's a lot of people that just like, they'd come in and didn't, they didn't care as much. Mm-hmm. And like, well, I'm like, well, why do I really want to work as hard with you if you don't care about your goals? Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's my, my to me, it was like, well, insurance is paying for this, so they, you know, they, they, they're not taking it as seriously. They don't have as much skin in the game. They weren't doing yeah. their homework. Yeah, they don't do like, <laughs> no, one, no one does their homework, but especially in that setting, like, there's not as much. There's not a good like client. Oh, I'm going to do my HEP, my home exercise program. But <laughs> I just ended up. I'm like, man, this is not really what I thought physical therapy was. Uh, so I did that from early 2020 all the way to I think like October. But some, somewhere in there, I started assistant coaching the cross country team. Um, what high school was it? I think it was Loudoun Valley. Um, it was in Percival, Virginia. So like they had the phenomenal cross country team. They won nationals two years in a row. So I'm like, this is a great place to be. Yeah. And I ended up like, I would go there, whip open my table. I would just see the, I was, they, they said I was an assistant coach, but I would just like treat the kids for free, which is pretty cool. Oh, nice. Um, so I got, I loved it. I'm like, man, I want to, I would love to do this like full, t- like for my full time job. And so I just started thinking about it. And then eventually I was like, Maybe I can do this like, you know, out of network cash practice, be able to see people for an hour and actually like work with the people I want to work with, work with more, in this case, just the runners. Yeah. And so I ended up working with a group that, uh, the owner of it, he had started a cash practice. I think he was in like Atlanta or something, but so his, what he does now is he helps other people, other PTs do this. And I'm like, well, I'm I feel dumb if I don't do this. <laughs> so ended up doing it. And then, so I started the business Alpha Project Physio at the end of 2020, like October, I just going to people's homes and just like, I would just see a lot of runners like in their homes. <laughs> it was yeah. other people too. But so I ended up doing that, um, found a gym in Germantown that was like, I'm like, Hey, I got really busy. I need, I can't just, I have 30 people a week. It's way too much to keep driving from house to house. Like I need, like I need somewhere to be. They were like, Hey, just treat out of our gym. That's fine. You know, we'll worry about rent and stuff. We'll do that stuff later. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, so basically I was treating out of CrossFit Germantown for a while and ended up, they had some overhead they didn't need anymore from you know, COVID. They just lost them some members. So eventually I took over some space. So now we have like our own private space over there. Uh, and then very quickly became, I want to see, basically, I want to see more than runners. It became CrossFit athletes, became a lot more active people. Mm. Eventually, Veronica brought my wife on, Veronica, to do the public floor side of things. And then basically, that is how we have grown since. And then now, more recently, we have a location here in Columbia, which is pretty cool. Oh, cool. All right. Very awesome. Yes, you just bootstrapped it. Yes. I'm like, I guess I'm going to figure it out as I go. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But it was, COVID, it was kind of crazy, but I think it was, uh, it was, as horrible as it could be for a lot of people. And like, I, you know, I know a lot of people had problems with it, but it did, it gave us the opportunity to say, you know, this one system that we think is broken in the insurance yeah. side, yeah, the out of network side, we can see people for a whole hour yeah. and not have to like pass them along and actually give them, actually solve the problem and give them the quality care that we think they deserve versus get them yeah. in, build their insurance and like see them with two or the people at the same time. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's not that all, all insurance practices are like, are like yeah. that, but a lot of them are. It's very challenging. I mean, people listening to this, they may have gone to one, and it's very challenging for the for the doctor to actually solve your problem when they're like, I have you and two other people. Right. I'm treating it once, and it's very 
it's hard to solve complex problems yes. when you're doing three things at once. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like trying to drive. You can't even drive a car without multitasking, <laughs> let alone yeah. seeing three people at the same time. It's very challenging. Well, yeah. and um, then you have the other limit where the insurance company is saying how many times you can go see the PT. Yes. So, uh, so you. It's super frustrating. Yeah. There's that side of it where they're like, you yeah. only have. It d- depends on the insurance, I guess. But yeah. it's like, hey, you have six sessions. Well, what if I want them to come ten? What if they want to come ten times? Oh, yeah. Well, well, tough luck. I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah. So that sucks. But also, a lot of times, insurance will say. Um, what are they coming in for? Oh, it's their shoulder in the back. Oh, yeah, you can only treat one. Sorry. Wow. Jeez, really? They, yeah, they'll say, wow. what's the sc- oh, they got to come back for the shoulder. And then they might oh, not have enough God. sessions a left. A separate billing. Oh, yeah, my gosh. so that's, that's the problem. Yeah, you have to bill it depending on, and then you can't treat it. But, like, but we, can do, we can do anything. We, we have the freedom to do anything we want. We don't have like a hand yeah. tied behind our back. Yeah. Like I'm going to try and treat you with one hand versus now we have, we, we, can do, we can really do anything we want. So we have a lot of freedom. And as a patient, like that's the greatest thing ever because now you're not limited to. Yeah. We can only treat this one thing. We can't. We can't go over this, and then you don't have insurance calling me saying, "How are they doing? How are they doing?" And it's a waste mm. of my time. Mm. Versus, I could be doing con ed and actually trying to be a better clinician to help you solve yeah. the problem. So it's actually solve the it's, problem. Everything good comes out of going out of network, and everything like restrictive and limiting. Not that insurance is horrible, but the right. network side of it very. Very often restricts what we can do as as PTs. As That's super interesting. Yeah, yeah we had a, a PT in here on uh, Saturday doing a podcast, and she said the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. she said yeah. it's really, it sucks. Yeah, yeah. Netflix like, needs to do a documentary and expose this man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very. It's almost. And I've had. You know, sometimes we you know we hop on these calls with patients, and some of them they. I don't know if they've been to physical therapy before, but they you know they maybe they're a little more money conscious, which I totally understand it. But like, um, I had somebody who was like willing to come in, who's down, his insurance, out of network people get, uh, yeah. you know, get like 40% back. They just submit yeah. it on their own. Like mm-hmm. we don't deal with the insurance company. Mm-hmm. They do. Yeah. And I think he was going to get like 60% back. And I'm like, man, this is really good. Like you're going to get a lot of good, get a good yeah. amount of money back. And he was like, well, I call insurance. And the guy was like, well, I get like 10 visits or 15 visits for free. Why would I not go in network? I'm like, mm. well, you could. I'm not saying you can't do that. Right. But like, what kind of care do you think? You'll, is that going to solve the problem? Yeah. Do you think yeah. free <laughs> care is going to solve it? Which I get. He's paying a premium. I get that for his insurance. But I'm like, do you really think that free physical therapy is going to solve your problem? Um, yeah. The conversation didn't go very well through that. But, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. You know, maybe he was a good candidate for us. It's, it's okay. It happens. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think people need to understand that there's a price and a cost mm. where it might, might, the price might be higher for something. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's almost like, do you want to get the Lexus or do you want to get my Hyundai Accent? I'm like, yeah. People are expecting something different with the higher price, and then also yeah. the cost of it is, you know, for us, it's you can see us for an hour once a week and save you time. Or do you want to go see somebody three times a week, right. be there a lot more often, use more of your time, and probably get less quality care? So mm-hmm. there's always a price associated with the cost. Well, and then the bottom line is maybe the problem isn't solved if you go yeah. for the free thing. Yeah. Yeah, you feel better for a while, but the, it, the problem becomes chronic instead of actually solving yeah. it. Did you actually solve it? Did you just like make it feel better? I Which, think, you know, you'd, I'd want to pay more to solve the problem and yeah. be done and yes. not have to go back in three years down the road, five years down the road, and keep going back in over and over and over again. It, it's, it's rough. It's a challenge. And like what we try and do is like we'll say well, our plan is we want to find the root cause of the problem. I'm not just, we don't even have a ice pack machine or like, we don't even have an ultrasound. Like we just, that stuff just, in my opinion, just, it's not going to solve any problems. Yeah. So like our goal is, can we find the root cause of the problem? Can we then make a plan? We know what's going on. Can we make a plan to solve it? And then we just have to implement the plan. And then it's, well, that probably is going to solve your problem. If you don't, if you have, if you have knee pain and you run like crap and you're really (laughs) tight and you don't strength train. Well, guess what we have to do? All those three things. It's probably <laughs> going to solve your knee pain. So yeah, uh, there's a it's we ha- that's kind of what we use, but it's it's actually amazingly simple when you have the time to solve a problem. When you're not rushed, I mean, it's it's like anything. If you're rushed, you're probably yeah. not going to do the best job. Yeah, yeah that's the way I see it. Yeah, for that sure. That is true. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, spending yeah. quality time. Yeah. <laughs> well, and giving giving you the clinician time to. You know, think it through and troubleshoot. Yeah. Like that takes some brain power. And sometimes too, like we'll do something and like, hey, do these exercises, and you come back a week later, like, ooh, didn't help much, or I got worse. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, okay, well, let's just like, let's find out why that happened. Yeah, 
versus yeah. like in the other setting, I'd be like scrambling. Oh man, I got 30 minutes. I got to go like, like, how am I going to do this? Yeah. <laughs> There's so much nuance and troubleshooting and yep. yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, let's see your social media is mm-hmm. the same as Veronica's or we said it in the last podcast, but yeah. So hers is hers like has the name in it, but it's, so okay. it's alpha project physio, uh, just on Instagram. It's on okay. Facebook, Instagram, I run TikTok too. I just don't use it as much, <laughs> but, uh, run most of the social media platforms that it's, so alpha project is physio with a Z. If yeah. you wanted to be modern, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> we had a Z in there, but it's alpha project physio. Um, I don't think the perform, if you put, if you type that in, we'll we were, we're definitely going to pop up. Okay. Cool. Um, cool. But yeah, check us out on Instagram. Um, our Sweet. website's also. All right. If you have any questions about what we do too, like the website's very. I think it's pretty, pretty informative. It's a like, great website. Um, I just yeah, I was looking at it this morning. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> but like, check out the website if you're like, hey, this interests me. Cool. If not, I get it. But like, we're not for everybody, but we're for those people that like really want to be yeah. active and not have, not be like, ooh, my shoulder hurts. I can't press overhead anymore. Like, no, that's a normal motion. Yeah. It's just a lot of people can't press overhead because of you know X Y Z reason. Um, so I think the website does a pretty good job of like explaining kind of what we do. Cool. Cool. Very cool. cool. And then we always like to, to end things off with, uh, what are three things that elevate your life? So are three things that elevate my life. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, definitely spending quality time with my family. Um, spending, t- spending time, like not doing business stuff because mm-hmm. it's very, very much, very easy for, for like, for me yeah. to just like, all I'm going to do is entrepreneur business stuff and not spend time on myself. So it's very, um, so I prioritize that. And I always feel really great after doing, whether it's just, it's family stuff kind of, or like on my own stuff, like working around the house. I think that's, I kind of lump that into one. Um, I think, um, I like to bow hunt and I didn't do a lot of scouting last year and I paid for it this year. So, but I do really enjoy being in the woods and that's why running is a part of that is like, yeah. I just get the, forget everything. I'm on my own. I just get to de-stress. Yeah. So I think running on my own elevates me or working out. Uh, I mean, being out in the woods, like hunting or just scouting, I think would be the third one of just things that make me feel good and allow me to continue to do, uh, continue to, to be who I am and not be like, Oh, I do is business. I'm this boring business dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't want that. To, I don't want that to happen to me. I'm like, I need to be more than just somebody yeah. who like runs a business and yeah. stuff. Yeah. For sure. For awesome. Sure. Cool. That's awesome. Cool, man. Well, yeah, we appreciate you coming on. This was awesome. Thank you. This that is was fun. You're a natural. <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> had a little bit of practice. Yeah. <laughs> and we are bringing you in to do a workshop. Let's do it. So you want to be running one? What do you want to do? Uh, probably. Running. Probably yeah, a running yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, we're doing one. Yeah. one at the – I've had a lot of questions on like breathing pattern. You, you, you were talking, we were talking I did, about I saw your video on breathing. I tried it today. It worked. It's. I didn't know that was a need for like breathing pattern with running. But like it's – I had, I had somebody who had, uh, don't be off tangent here, but she had asthma growing up. And so she's afraid mm. to breathe hard. But I'm oh. like, if you don't breathe hard, you're not going to be able to sustain <laughs> your pace. <laughs> yeah. So like we had a, we had a long conversation about that and it brought her from like 11 minute pace to like a nine. I'm like, wow. Just Whoa. from, well, she wouldn't get tired breathing. She would get like this weird tingly, like buildup of, of CO2 in her body. Uh. She wasn't getting rid of it. So she'd get this weird tingly sensation, of, you know, <laughs> builds up in her bloodstream. And I'm like, crazy. you just have to breathe more and get that CO2 out. <laughs> like you're, you're going to run like much more efficiently. So it. apparently that's a, a problem that needs to be solved. But we can, we can talk about two more of what we want to do with Fantastic. this workshop. Yeah. yeah sounds awesome. like a plan. Cool. All right, guys. Well, yeah, hopefully this was helpful. We'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye-bye.